Welcome to this short video about my solo cycling weekend trip to Girona. In this video we're going to explore the Strava route I followed, the hotel and rental bike options I chose, the bike itself, as well as some of the highs and lows of the trip itself. In planning the trip in the preceding months I decided on a route first and then built the logistics around that. Um, there were lots of suggested routes available on Strava and I ended up deciding on this one, primarily because it matched a typical Sunday ride with my local cycle group of about 50 miles and about 3,000 feet of elevation. Also, my motivation was to do a ride I would enjoy uh, without the pressure of working for a specific goal like average speed uh, and also one that would fit nicely in the day. When you look at the map of Girona, you quickly realise that most things are in walking distance. And again, there are a lot of hotels as well as bike rental locations. I splashed out a bit on a nice four star hotel. The Nord 901 hotel shown here um, was perfect. The location was very nice and the rooms were very well equipped. And as you can see here, there was a very nice pool, which if it was summertime, um, I think I would have really rather enjoyed. Um, I included breakfast in my reservation, which is probably a mistake as there were a lot of far cheaper eateries around the hotel. Um, for two nights with breakfast, I ended up paying about £250 all in um, for a nice double room. For bike hire, I chose Eat Sleep Cycle, mostly because I'd seen lots of YouTube videos about it and they seemed very well set up with the whole hub with four satellites encompassing a coffee shop, workshop, bike shop, as well as the hire location. Uh, the hire location isn't shown on the video clip, it's literally just 20 meters around the corner. At home I ride a mid-range full carbon road bike, which is made by Merida. It's the Merida Sculterra 5000. It's got a mechanical Altegra Shimano drive set and aloe wheels. So when I went to rent something, I thought I'd try something a little bit more in the semi-professional range. So I opted for the Ridley Falcon. That came with DI2 Altegra and carbon DT Swiss wheels, uh, which I really wanted to try. I was traveling light, so I only took my bike clothes, bike shoes and trip computer. I was able to rent a helmet, which I didn't have to take with me, and the bike came with a Wahoo adapter, uh, which is really helpful, and all of that was for 108 euros for eight hours. It seems a bit expensive, but it is a, a 6,000 pound bike in the UK, and I think the rates probably come down for multi-day rentals. Also having the Wahoo element roam turned out to be super useful. I loaded the Strava route on it ahead of time, which meant I was able to easily find all of the right turns, get around without, without too much drama. Having said that, leaving Girona was a bit challenging at first. Um, I had to get orientated around heading in the right direction, which when you're riding on a new side of the road, and you're trying to follow the correct route and look at your GPS, it's a little confusing. Um, but I was able to head out north, um, out of the city, um, and to the main road, which was headed towards um, Bagnall. I hope I pronounced that correctly. At uh, one point, I wondered if I was uh, on a legitimate cycle route, because it felt very much like a motorway, um, until I spotted cyclists on the other side. But the, the route, very quickly took me off the main drag and I was on to some of the routes that I was kind of expecting, which was really a nice mix of quiet roads. In fact, these people were the only people I encountered um, on the route. Um, and then I was able to get into areas like woodlands. The weather was um, a little overcast. It wasn't raining at this point. Um, not yet anyway, more of that to come. And um, relatively quickly, um, certainly under an hour, um, I was uh, able to find my way um, around to uh, Bagnall, which I think is about a third of the way around. And I found a 
coffee shop which provided a wonderful warm cappuccino and I think I paid um, just over over two euros for that privilege. The next section of the ride which made up probably the biggest part of the ride I would say was was probably my favorite part of, of the whole trip. Um, it was made up of really very long sections of gently undulating, mostly mostly straight roads with relatively gentle climbs. The views um, extended out way into the distance and the, the ride was kind of um, interspersed with, with really small um, and small villages. Also from my point of view this is where the bike probably performed the best. Um, and I was able to maintain speeds well above my average um, back home almost almost effortlessly and it was a much much more comfortable ride than um, I was used to. Um, I assume this was mostly due to the fact that it was a, a Selle Italia saddle, I don't think I mentioned that in the original configuration. Also the DT Swiss wheels um, were, were really really very very pleasant. Surprisingly, I found my first experience of Shimano Di2 to be really very mixed. I was expecting it to be a much smoother experience. The front derailleur experience was, was definitely glorious and gave a satisfying chunk whenever I engaged it. And it was perfectly trimmed as well, so there was never any kind of chain drag, if that's the right term, in, in any gear, which is something that frustrates me on my, on my mechanical. Uh, Integra drive chain. Um, the rear derailleur I felt was really less satisfying, um, especially when changing down under load when you're climbing um, and seemed to kind of ping and grunch in, in, in sort of protest. But on the flat, um, it was really, really very clean. Um, my mechanical Integra configuration at home probably those seem to be um, a much better option. I don't think I will be um, upgrading to, uh, to DI2 soon. Um, but probably look at maybe a new saddle or, or um, changing my wheels perhaps. At this point I figured I was right about um, halfway around and I, I came up to uh, a major junction and some more kind of main roads. Um, the thing I found really interesting about this junction was um, that I was actually nearer to France um, than I was to Barcelona which was really the sort of start of my um, original trip um, and you can see uh, the signpost for Perpignan which is um, only about 72 kilometers away whereas uh, Barcelona is showing as uh, 129 kilometers. Um, I know it shows as Girona as 24 kilometers which can't be halfway around um, but 24 kilometers really via one of the main roads and not the routes that I uh, ended up taking which again were um, much more interesting in terms of um, you know, off the beaten track. It was um, good to feel that um, I was on my way round to completing the loop that I had planned though. The uh, nice people in Eat Sleep Cycle had advised me that uh, rain was due by about 11 o'clock and I'd set off at about 9ish and they advised me that if it were to become torrential by Bagnoli they recommend that I'd, I'd turn around and come back the way I'd come, which would have been a bit of a shame as um, the previous section had, had really been so good. Having said that, the weather, um, as predicted, um, did start to set in. Um, just as I was approaching Bordelis, which is about 11 miles um, to go to the end, I decided to see if I could sit out in a local cafe where I enjoyed a, a coffee for the princely sum of one euro sixty. Um, the weather did not improve and it got progressively colder and I thought it would be better to probably at least start moving and try and warm up um, rather than just stay um, put in this, uh, in this cafe. You can see from this climb at the end, which is really my last piece of cycling footage, um, that I was really able to get, that it really did get really rather moist. Uh, my glasses were all steamed up, couldn't see where I was going um, and I was just really focused um, on getting back as soon as possible. On reflection I should have tried to get some final footage particularly of the descent into Girona itself 
as it followed a wonderful winding road behind the Basilica and the Old City and I think would have made a wonderful finale to show you guys um, but sadly the, uh, the weather was against us. Finally some takeaways and points of reflection on the trip and the various things I experienced. Firstly my trusty steed the Ridley Falcon. I would say definitely a 9 out of 10. I'm not sure I'd go full DI2 in the future, but would certainly consider a saddle or a wheel upgrade having ridden this, this marvellous machine. Secondly, the hotel, I would say an 8 out of 10. Very nice, smart and central, but probably a bit expensive if you are considering a trip yourself. And there are certainly lots of hotel and boarding options available to people in Girona, and most of them are pretty central. Thirdly, eat sleep cycle really is a hub where you can get to experience everything and anything you need to really cater for the most marvelous um, cycle trip, I would say. So I'm going to give that um, a 10 out of 10 and I really can't wait to go back. Finally, the city of Girona is really worth a visit in its own right with its river running through it, the various bridges across it, coupled with the sort of plethora of artisanal shops and eateries set in this glorious old world, unspoilt setting of ancient cobbled streets and buildings. It, it feels really much, much more like Florence, perhaps in Italy, than Spain.